the Orange Pie NAS expansion board. Today, we will be taking a look at the Orange Pie NAS expansion board that is meant to be used with the Orange Pie Zero. How well does it work? What kind of performance can you expect? And what might be some of the use cases for this product? Getting right into the specifications, the NAS expansion board is an add-on for the Orange Pi Zero that adds the following functionality. Two USB 2.0 ports, an mSATA interface, a SATA port, a power output for a mechanical disc, presumably outputting 5 volts, a component audio video out, a built-in microphone, and an infrared receiver slash transmitter. The expansion board connects to the Orange Pi Zero via a 13 pin header that is built into the Orange Pi Zero and comes with three standoff screw sets that you use to hold the two boards together while it's connected. Now, as far as use cases for this product, basically the main use case I would see for it is of course a NAS, which is otherwise known as network attached storage. It's basically a device on the network that allows any other device on the network to, uh, to store and retrieve files from it. You could also set it up to where it's accessible to any device through the internet as well. Of course, there are a lot of things that you can do with a file server that runs Linux. You could use it as a media server with a service such as Plex. You could use it as a web server for hosting your own website or some project websites. Have you ever heard of an upside down Terranet? It's actually a really interesting case there that you might wanna check out. Since the NAS is connected to the Orange Pi Zero, it's actually important that we go over these specs as well. There are four variants of the Orange Pi Zero. The first two are the original Orange Pi Zero. They're basically identical except for one board has 256 megabytes of RAM, the other board has 512. They both use the all winner H2 Plus processor, which is an ARM7 core running at 1.2 gigahertz, uh, four cores. They also have one USB 2.0 port, a 100 megabit per second ethernet port, and built in 2.4 gigahertz in spec Wi-Fi, as well as a 26 pin GPIO header that has no pins populated to it by default. And then of course you have the 13 pin interface uh, that we spoke about earlier. Now the second two variants are the Orange Pi 2 the Orange Pi Zero 2 board. They have everything that's on the original Orange Pi Zero, but they also have an HDMI port, a Raspberry Pi style camera connector, built-in Bluetooth, and a built-in eight gigabytes of flash storage. The last variant is the upgraded version. It's the same as the Orange Pi 2 Zero, but also has an upgraded processor in it as well. It has the all winner H5, which is a 64-bit quad-core A53 ARM processor. Now, for my testing, I'm using an original Orange Pi Zero with the 512 megabytes of RAM. I also use three different drives, four if you're including the SD card. And the reason I did that is so I could benchmark different types of storage through the different interfaces. I use a generic 8 gigabyte flash drive plugged into the USB port on the Orange Pi Zero itself, a 60 gigabyte mSATA SSD in the mSATA slot, and I also originally used a 1.5 terabyte mechanical hard drive, 5400 RPM drive plugged into the SATA port. However, during my testing I found that that drive was failing and so I replaced it with a 500 gigabyte Hitachi 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive. The setup is not very difficult at all software wise, so long as you have some experience with Linux commands and SSH. I used the Ubuntu server image available on the Orange Pi website and it was up and fully running in the space of about an hour. The hardware setup, it's considerably more difficult. I really struggled for a long time to figure out how I wanted to configure the hardware for this NAS. Should I run an MSATA SSD? Should I run a mechanical hard drive? What about both? How do I power all of this since the Orange Pi Zero wants power through a micro USB OTG cable 
and the NAS expansion board wants two amps of its own 5 volt power through this barrel jack. And then, what about the hard drive? Well, the hard drive needs power too, and how do I power that? So, in the end, I found this 5 volt 2.5 amp power supply, and I created my own monstrosity of a cable. I could never find a barrel plug that fits this uh, jack here on the Orange Pi NAS, so, as well as the original Orange Pi Zero boards, or the Orange Pi boards. So I just soldered the cable directly to the bottom of the board, then I also spliced in a micro B cable to power the Orange Pi Zero, as well as this cable to power a SATA drive minus the 12 volt lead. So now that we're set up and running, it's a good time to talk about some of the weak points that this configuration has. Number one, using desktop mechanical hard drives. When I think of a NAS, I don't really think of a single drive setup. I think of using multiple hard drives and a RAID 1 or RAID 10 configuration. That way you have a large amount of storage that is also safely backed up in case of a drive failure. But you can't do that with this product. First off, there's only one SATA port and one M SATA port. There is also two USB ports, but what I found in my testing is that each USB port is actually linked to one of the SATA connectors. So if I plugged something in here, it would actually disable this SATA port. And if I plugged a USB flash drive in here, it would disable this M SATA port. So you, you only either get one or the other, you can't do both. And so using like a USB to SATA cable wouldn't, wouldn't work either. But besides not having enough ports, you also have the issue of how you're gonna power all of this. Desktop hard drives need both a 12 volt and a 5 volt power supply to operate. So now you either need to use two or more power supplies to power the Orange Pi Zero, the NAS expansion board, and the hard drive, or you just have to use something like a computer power supply to power the whole setup with a 24 pin cable just dangling off somewhere doing nothing. The second weak point about this whole thing is speed. And this is going to take a little bit more of an explanation. Before we start, we need to differentiate between megabytes per second and megabits per second because the terms are used interchangeably when they shouldn't be and cause a lot of confusion. Basically, a byte consists of eight bits, always. When referring to transfer speed, megabits per second is used, and referring, when we're referring to storage, megabytes per second is used. So let's look at the speeds of the different interfaces of the Orange Pi Zero. When you connect a drive to the SATA interface, I'm assuming this is a SATA 2 interface, the maximum bandwidth that is supported is 3 gigabits per second. Now to convert this into bytes, we divide the bits by eight. So three billion bits per second divided by eight equals 375 or million bytes per second or 375 megabytes per second. So our current maximum that we're at with the SATA interface is 375 megabytes per second. However, the SATA interface on this board is connected to the Orange Pi Zero via a USB 2.0 interface. So now we have another bottleneck. What is the maximum throughput of this USB 2.0 interface? Basically, 480 megabits per second is the maximum throughput. If we convert that into bytes, it's equal to 60 megabytes per second is our current maximum throughput because we're limiting our SATA interface by our USB interface. Quite a difference, but that's also not the worst news. Basically, the worst part of this is, is this, this 100 megabit per second ethernet connection. The reason this is really bad, if we do the math on 100 megabits per second, this comes out to a transfer speed of 12.5 megabytes per second. So now we've limited 400 and something megabytes per second to 60 megabytes per second, all the way down over the network to 12.5 megabytes per second. 
basically, if this had been a gigabit ethernet connector, this product would be in a world different than it is, but it is not. And this is the main weak point of this entire setup. And it almost kills a deal for me, just to be honest. So besides that, my last weak point I think we should discuss on this is probably the durability. And granted, this is a hit and miss subject. How will the hardware hold up after time and running an OS off a SD card has inherent problems as well. As far as the SD card is concerned, I did try imaging uh, the mechanical disc I had plugged into the, the SATA port as the boot drive and I was unable to boot from it. I'm guessing it's probably because of the way that the USB interface is there. So the only way I could get this thing to run is to actually boot the OS off the SD card. However, to be honest, I also don't see, once you're set up and running, a whole lot of writes and reads being done from this all the time. So to be honest, it's probably a non-issue anyways. Now that I've ripped on this, let's go over some of the good points before we move on. The first thing is the size. This thing is actually really small and it's not much smaller than, or much different than like a laptop hard drive, which you're probably gonna be using it with anyways. So you could put this almost anywhere and not have to worry about taking a bunch of space. I could easily see in this like just being on top or maybe beside my router, you know, out of sight, out of mind, much tidier than a full computer tower acting as a server. The other thing is this is quiet. There are no fans. Even with a spinning mechanical hard drive attached to this, I couldn't hear it over my desktop computer when I was testing it. It is quiet, unnoticeable wherever you put it. Third thing is the power. I was able to power this entire setup as well as a mechanical hard drive with only a five volt, 2.5 amp power supply. Does it have watts on here? Um, 13 watts of power, maximum if it's using the whole 13 watts. That is nothing damn near. Your your router probably pulls more than that because most routers like two plus amps at 12 volts, which is more watts. And so the other thing is convenience. In my case, once it was set up, I didn't have any issues with it. It was there, it was running. I left it on for days, came back, still no issues. I didn't have to constantly reboot it or do anything else. So it, it's actually really convenient. You don't have to worry about much of anything with this once it's you know set up, put up, and everything else. The only concern I have about that that I'll talk about is the Wi-Fi. A, you should never run a NAS on Wi-Fi anyways. It's just, it's not a smart thing to do. However, you know, I wanted to test and benchmark that anyways, just to see how stable it was if, if it was stable and then to see if the speed would be any better than the ethernet connection. But apparently there's a lot of issues with the Wi-Fi drivers and the Wi-Fi chipset on this board. So when I tried to get Wi-Fi running, it actually crashed the entire thing. It would no longer even boot. And I had to re-image the SD card just to get up and running again. So Wi-Fi, I can't really test and I don't know if it's my specific board. I might try it again as, at a later date and give you guys an update then. Now, as far as performance, I got exactly what I was expecting. I got 10 to 11 megabytes per second consistently. 12.5 is your maximum possible. You're never really gonna reach that. There's always an overhead. So to get 10 to 11 consistently was actually pretty good. Depending on your use case, if that fits your needs, then this product will really suffice. Now, out of curiosity, I installed a Plex server on it and I moved my entire Plex media library over to it. I only have like a 300 gigabyte library, mostly because it's legit stuff. Um, so I've transferred all the movies and television shows that I own to it. And that took about eight hours to transfer. Once transferred, I tried to see how many concurrent streams I could run from it. And the answer is basically two with one stream seeking to different spots along the show or the movie worked perfectly fine and even transcoding was possible. However, it did take a while for the transcode to begin to start. And then with transcoding, 
I actually could not watch another stream. If I'm not transcoding, I'm just watching the original source. Two separate streams worked pretty well. However, if either one of those needed transcoding, then basically they would both shut down. Three streams really proved too much for the little device. Um, it caused them all to rotate buffering as they were all trying to access a disk at once. So if you want to experiment with the Plex server, that's what you can expect. One stream consistently, which I know doesn't make a very good media server. If you need transcoding, if you don't need transcoding, then two streams is about where you're at. All the files I used to test this were 1080 source files. I did not try anything in 4K. I don't believe it can handle it with that kind of speed. And yeah, I did notice some file types work better than others, but I didn't really take notes of which ones were performing better. So it might be worth a more in-depth study at another time, as well as, you know, maybe not that it's a great idea. Maybe if you transcoded your library to like 720, would that make it perform better? So again, more study for another time, possibly. In conclusion, Although I'm disappointed to see this product stuck with a 100 megabit per second ethernet connection, I do see some use cases for it. And you know what, I'll keep it around for experimenting with as well as if I ever need to recover information from an MSATA drive because now I have a handy interface for that. That being said, the price is a huge plus for this. The NAS expansion board was $10. The Orange Pi Zero itself was like 13. So you know, a little over $20 gives you a development board to play with as well as a NAS expansion board. And so one thing I wouldn't recommend though is getting a MSATA drive for this purpose because MSATA drives are actually quite expensive. They are SSDs and you have to remember SSDs are high performance drives and you're going to be limiting that by that ethernet connection. So it's really, it's just not worth it as far as the MSATA SSD thing goes. But if you have an old laptop hard drive lying around, then this can easily turn it into a NAS. Uh, you know, those even if you bought an old laptop hard drive, you could get refurbished one and it's gonna be a lot cheaper on the dollar per gigabyte than almost anything else. So with that, Thank you guys for watching this review. I did purchase this on my own for the review. Uh, it was not sponsored in any way, shape, or form. I have no sponsors. I'm not that good yet. <laughs> um, if there's anything you would like to uh, like me to check out as far as the uh, Orange Pie NAS, feel free to let me know in the comments or on my website as well. Coming up this week, I will be releasing a tutorial video on how to set this up as a headless Linux file sharing server with Samba, as well as smart monitoring tools on how to keep your drive in check and healthy and let it notify you if something goes wrong. So look for that coming out this week as well. I know that means no drone stuff this week. It's like I said in my video Monday, I'm getting unpacked. I'm getting back into it. It's not gonna happen right away. Just be patient and things will start coming together. With that, my name is The Lazy PC. Thank you for watching.